Alright everybody, I'm back with a TNA review. Um, first off, I had the misfortune of missing No Surrender, so I won't be commenting on any of the matches that went on. I did take a, take a uh, minute to read the results, and um, I guess I'm okay with uh, what the outcome of it was. Having Hardy win the, um, the Bound for Glory tournament was actually a sort of a surprise because for months they have been building James Storm very strongly to win this entire thing so it, it was almost everybody had this huge prediction of him winning so them swerving us and giving us Hardy instead to face off against Ares was a nice swerve and I have no doubt in my mind that Hardy versus Ares who have never faced off before is going to be an excellent match at Bound for Glory and I hope to see that whenever it comes on so actually I can't wait to see that Hardy and Aries should have a match of the year candidate so I'm real excited to see that okay well first off um, we had Austin Aries come out and congratulate Jeff Hardy before winning the tournament and giving big props to him saying that he respected him for defeating the the two same guys that he beat uh, Samoa Joe and Bully Ray but in the same night which gained a lot of respect for Aries, which had uh, Hardy come out and do his usual thing of not talking as much on the mic, keeping it short and sweet, that's what Aries pointed out, and uh, one thing I did find interesting was that like he noted that Hardy doesn't speak much on the mic, yet he's like cheered a whole lot, and Aries will tell the crowd to keep quiet and stuff, and they'll still cheer him, which which I thought was kind of funny, and it rings true. I like the fact that Aries isn't your prototypical face that sucks up to the crowd. You know, he's not afraid to, you know, tell the crowd to be quiet whenever he's trying to make a point. You know, it comes off more as as like an earthy kind of guy. Oh, well, maybe not earthy. That's probably not the right word, but he's just not robotic like a bunch of faces are. And then uh, Bully Ray came out and then said pretty much that he was screwed, and he kept calling Aries and. Hardy, Lucky, at, you know, they're at this point, and then uh, the match for Jeff Hardy and Bully Ray was announced for later in the night, so, and then afterwards, um, just a little bit afterwards, Taz and Mike Tanay, um were class acts in acknowledging Jerry Lawler's health scare on Monday Night Raw, and they wished him well, and I thought that, that was a very classy move on a part of them and TNA, that's that's really good to acknowledge someone in their, I don't know if you can call it competition, but they acknowledge someone from the uh, from the other company and they're wishing him well. That's really, really nice. So I thought that was a good move on them. So big ups to Taz and Tanae. Um, after that, we had Zima Ion defend his X Division title against Sanjay Dutt. And um, I thought Sanjay Dutt didn't get a deal with TNA and, until maybe a couple days uh, ago, I read that Sanjay Dutt was facing Ion for the title at uh, No Surrender, so I was surprised to hear that he had got a contract because they said that he wasn't going to do anything, that they weren't going to do anything with him, even though he had like a memorable, memorable performance at Destination X when he like pulled out his shoulder joint or whatever. So I thought that was good. They rehired him. Um, it was a good match, uh, vintage X Division style. I uh, saw a lot of Huracaranas from. Um, Sanjay Dutt and he pulled out new variations of him that I have not seen before. I liked one where he kind of like rolled on his back on the apron into a Huracarana to Ion on the outside. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, nice moonsault stomp off the top rope to um, Zima Ion. I thought that was really nice. Uh, Ion, I think, threw or uh, Dutt fell on the bottom turnbuckle and then Ion rolled him up. So it was a good heel tactic that he used. So Ion retains. And then afterwards, Ion um, kind of like snapped Dutt's arm back to the mat and then kind of used a variation of the Juju Katami, the cross arm breaker. So it looks like that's another one of his lethal finishing maneuvers that he's uh, installed into his repertoire as of late. So that's a good move. Uh, afterwards, uh, it was a promo with Rude coming out saying how he screwed over Robert Rude and uh, 
pretty much the same stuff that they've been going back and forth with Rude and Storm for a year now, leading up to their um, eventual match at Bound for Glory, which I assume is going to be good, and I assume this time uh, Storm is going to get the victory. So, and then uh, Storm came out and they started falling for a bit, so it was nothing major, so it leaves more to build up their feud to Bound for Glory. <clears throat> And then after that, uh, we had AJ Styles versus uh, Kazarian, which if uh, AJ Styles won, him and Kurt Angle would get another shot at the tag team titles uh, for Christopher Daniels and Kazarian, the world tag team champions of the world. I always crack up when they when they give that that when they get when they uh, mention their name, their tag team name. I think that's really funny. I'm kind of like that. I'm redundant. You know, on purpose, which makes me sound like a, a dumbass, but I think it's funny. I, I love Christopher Daniels. I've been a huge fan of his for quite a while now. Um, he's just really good on the mic. And I don't see why he hasn't been TNA World Heavyweight Champion yet. That just that's lost on me. I don't get why, because he's such an amazing talent. And for a guy that's almost been a pioneer for TNA, it's just an injustice that he hasn't been World Champion yet. So, uh, anyways, straying off topic. Uh, it was a very, very good match. There was one point in the match where AJ Styles was about to give an apron DDT to Kazarian, and, Kazar and uh, Kazarian has a penchant for kind of overselling some moves at times, and uh, how Kazarian sold it was that he almost hit his head, and then kind of like flipped off of the apron, and it made it look like AJ was going for a brain buster, and that was like a very sick spot. I thought that Kazarian was seriously hurt there, but a uh, good thing that he wasn't. Um... Yeah, there was some other good spots in the match that I liked. I think, like, uh, Kazarian monkey flipped AJ on the outside, something I've not seen before, and then AJ sold it to perfection, so I thought that was really good. And then um, AJ Styles gets the victory with the Styles class, uh, the Styles Clash. And um, it sucks. Um, we haven't seen the Spiral Tap or the Superman Splash from AJ in a while. So I know AJ's trying to play it smart, and he's trying to... Uh, not injure himself with him getting a bit older, which which I uh, I commend because I want to see Styles wrestle until he's 40 or something, but I don't know if he'll want to wrestle that long, but as long as I'm endowed by his wrestling, you know, for a while longer, then I'll be happy. <clears throat> so yeah, Styles wins. And after that, we have um, a Bully Ray and Jeff Hardy segment with Bully Ray uh, coercing Jeff into a putting up his Bound for Glory or a title shot in line and Jeff acquiesces just like a regular face would, you know, oh I don't care, I'll I'll put on my my shot whenever and stuff, so yeah, there was that. And then afterwards we had um, a Hulk Hogan promo. Uh, he was hyping up Jeff Hardy, eighties style, saying like, Oh dude, he's from another planet, man. He's just Oh, he's just something else, and you know, I'll tell you what, brother, he's going to haul ass at Bound of Glory. I don't know. It was something like that. Just a standard Hogan promo. Nothing really entertaining. And then it cut to a scene of uh, aces and eights, like saying, oh, we're going to be all over the place, so watch your back, blah, blah, blah. I think they're going to have that aces and eights thing further on until uh, Bound for Glory, and I think that's where it should really end. After that, it's really going to drag on, so I could see why they're still dragging it on now, because they're going to save maybe like a huge, you know, outcome or swerve about for glory, so that's good on them. But after that, no more. And then we had um, uh, one minor thing. Uh, there was a Chavo, Guerrero, and Hernandez segment backstage. It's something that kind of offended me a bit. Chavo was like saying... I don't know how he said it, but he segued into his whole lying, cheating, and stealing thing. I think that's when Daniels cost Chavo a match or something recently. And, uh, probably on No Surrender. And Chavo was, like, saying, Oh, I, I invented the lying, cheating, and stealing thing. I was like, That's totally stretching the truth there. You know, the late, great Eddie Guerrero was the... You know, he was one of the innovators of that. And just saying, you know, Chavo taking credit for it was a little... I didn't like that that much. 
And then afterwards we had a, a match between Christopher Daniels and Chavo Guerrero, which was a really good match. I liked it. Um, Styles Kaz though was the match of the night, so, but um, not taking any way, taking anything away from uh, Chavo and Daniels. That was a really good match. Um, Chavo wins with the three amigos and the frog splash, so that was good. So I think it's probably going to be a three-way tag team match now with uh, Styles and Kazarian defending the titles against the team of Chavo Guerrero and Hernandez and the team of Kurt Angle and AJ Styles. So that should be a really kick-ass match. I'm assuming it'll be at Bound for Glory, so that's going to be really good. Um, and afterwards we had Tara versus... Or not Tara, but uh, we had Tara come out and congratulate Miss Tessmacher on her uh, victory over her at No Surrender. And then uh, Miss Tessmacher comes out. And then uh, Tara kind of goes on, you know, sycophant-esque kind of role. She's trying to, like, say, oh, well, I'm going to present you the the um, Knockouts Championship because you deserve it and you beat me, teacher versus student kind of thing. And then I could tell easily, like, it was predictable, but I'm not saying that's a bad thing. But I saw Tara turning heel on Miss Tessmacher like a mile away. Hell, I even wrote it on my on my notebook, like when I was writing down everything that I was going to review about. I wrote Tara turns heel before she actually did, and then she did, and I was right. But I still marked out because I want to see Tara, you know, revert back to her old ways, and I want to see Tara become Knockouts champion at least one more time because she's one of the um, most talented Knockouts there in the company. So I think she deserves another shot. Um, and after that, we had. Oh, there was, like, some, like, with the Hogan, Dixie, Al Snow, D'Lo Brown, Brooke Hogan segment where they were, like, talking about their fear of aces and eights. I noticed some kind of echo going on. I don't know if it was just me, but there was, like, some echo going on in the uh, segment where they were talking. And it was just, like, as if there were two TVs on and I only have one TV. So I know it can't be just, you know, figment of my imagination, but I noticed that. I don't know if anybody else did. But anyways, I digress. Uh, the main event was Bully Ray versus Jeff Hardy uh, in a really good match. Uh, nothing real different. It was just they threw out their usual moves. Um, so it was it was a really good match though. I liked it. Uh, Hardy won with the with the twist of fate and the Swanton Bomb. So um, I I didn't think Bully Ray was gonna win. You know Hogan and company is really high. Uh, no pun intended on Jeff Hardy, so it looks like they're going to have him kind of be the equivalent to uh, John Cena or CM Punk, you know, WWE. They're going to have him, you know, go up the ranks, which I really hope Hardy doesn't defeat Aries. They really do need to mold uh, more guys, you know, into that, that higher main event level because whenever Aries comes out, he doesn't get much of a uh, reaction like the WWE guys do, which I think is sad because Aries has worked his ass off in order to get to where he is now, and uh, he's charismatic on the you know on the mic and in the ring. You know he exudes it. Therefore, I think he should get a bigger reaction than what he does. So I'm saying like probably against Hardy, they'll have Aries kind of make a slow heel turn, but they should really have Aries retain at Bound for Glory because they should. They should elevate the status of Austin Aries and make him believable, more believable than he already is, because we all can believe that Aries could defeat Hardy. So, um, not to say that I wouldn't like to see Hardy as champion, even though you know, I want him to go on another spell to where he gets high and he like disgraces the company again. Because if he does, I'll I'll have had it with him because I've had it with Hardy over the past several years with him screwing up every chance he gets. But it looks like he's turned his life around, and that's good, because he has a kid, and I, I seriously doubt his kid would want to screw up as a father, so... Anyways, enough taking shots at Jeff Hardy. But, yeah, the match ended cleanly, and then, for a surprise, TNA didn't end, you know, with Aces and Eights coming out and just screwing up the entire finish of the match, which is good. You know, we don't need that every week to make it look all dramatic, so... Um... So yeah, uh, I'm pumped up for Bound for Glory. Can't wait to uh, see it, and I'll have to catch No Surrender to see, you know, how good the matches were. Which, without a shadow of a doubt, you know, that I'm pretty sure all of them were really good. So, 
Anyways, that is my review for um, TNA Impact. So, take care.